Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. This is Simon with Our Trade, and I want to welcome everyone to our weekly webinar, mapping our week ahead. And uh, what we do here is pretty much uh, creating a plan for the week. And as I always quote the traders, they like to say, "Do you plan your trade, and then you trade your plan." And of course, nothing guarantees uh, success, but definitely uh, having uh, spend some time and uh, planning your trades uh, would bring more order and less chaos to your trading. A few things about myself. My my name is Simon Friedman. I'm an account manager, senior account manager with our trade. I've been trading for over 24 years involved with the industry. The first 11 years I was a prop trader in New York City and after that I moved into, as I like to say, less stressful environment I continue to trade and I uh, started to mentor and educate others. And I'm very happy to have a great opportunity to assist our customers at AvaTrade. Uh, the agenda of the webinar, as usual, we talk about indices, stocks, commodities, and Forex, and have a little bit of crypto for dessert. And um, we also uh, discuss some fundamentals. I'll present to you a few slides that I like to bring up uh, with some stories behind. And um, uh, we'll take a look at economic calendar. It's a big part of preparation for the upcoming week, as you don't want to be caught by surprise. A risk warning, you can find the full statement at avatrade.com website. Uh, everything we do here, it's purely educational. We do not suggest any trades, of course. Social media channels, uh, I highly recommend for you to follow us at uh, Telegram, at the X, and my favorite, as I usually say, uh, the YouTube channel where you can find uh, a lot of information, including educational material, tutorials, and webinars. So if you miss the webinar or you think you're going to miss the webinar, don't stress. You can find uh, our webinars being recorded and posted on YouTube. So if you are watching it on YouTube, uh, please subscribe, click on the bell so you'll be notified on new things coming in. Uh, definitely, if you feel that you like it, click on the like, uh, write your comments questions if you have and feel free to share it with your friends okay so a few flights a few slides sorry uh, these are from uh, marketwatch.com website uh, as we know uh, we had a pretty uh, interesting week right uh, we had uh, NFPs that kind of pushed the market down with uh, less jobs than expected and unemployment jumped to 4.3%. Market reacted to it. Uh, a lot of analysts are speaking about a recession and the fear and the panic and other things. You can find uh, information in the article. It gives the chart here uh, how recession followed the peak of the interest rate every time it happened. I also take a look at VIX. This is the weekly uh, chart. Most of it, this move up here happened on Friday. It was a super high volatility. And uh, just to remind you, we were sitting at 12 just two weeks ago, and then we went almost to 30 on VIX. That's a volatility index. Some call it the fear index. So also very important to take into consideration. Now, another thing, uh, it's an article here is uh, Warren Buffett, as we know, has been selling a lot of stocks and buying much less than he sold. And here's the latest one that he sold about half of his position in Apple. Also interesting article with details. Uh, okay, so uh, just, just in general, uh, we had a sell-off, uh, and it's very important what this week will bring. Uh, will we uh, continue selling? Will this panic grow into uh, a panicky sell-off? Or would investors find some uh, bargains after the sell-off? I guess we're going to find out. So this is the economic calendar, especially for new people. I want to mention a few things. First of all, you can find it on a web trader or on the app, or the mobile app. Also, 
can find it uh, through a lot of providers. It's all public information. If you're not familiar with it, please uh, learn more about it. And as I usually say, it's important to know ahead of time certain things are happening. So here, I just take out the high impact events. There's so much more you can filter through it. You can choose what's relevant to your trading and so on. So uh, this coming week, we have uh, PMI numbers from China. Uh, there's more, there's, uh, by the way, this week China's reporting um, import and export numbers, which is also very important. So then it's PMI number uh, for US Tuesday. It's all about uh, Australia and New Zealand. We have uh, interest rate decision from Australia, uh, statement, uh, press conference, retail sales from European Union, employment data uh, from New Zealand, and then uh, Thursday, we have a uh, governor of uh, Bank of Australia speaking and the inflation expectation from New Zealand. By the way, both Australian and New Zealand dollar, they were, uh, they've been a super, super weak in the past days and weeks. Friday, we have CPI number from China, also CPI from Germany, and we have employment data from Canada. Usually they report together with NFPs from the US. Uh, this month they did a week later usually it's the first friday of the month uh this time is the second friday so we have canadian data showing again we'll be watching canadian dollars been super super weak we we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to our forex session okay or section uh, i just want to show you a few things uh as we're going to indices just to give you an idea, uh, last week, I was talking about the index itself, not the future. So NASDAQ fell 2.4% and it's entered actually correction territory. It's down 10% from the July record high. Uh, Dow Jones uh, fell 1.5% and S&Ps fell 1.8%. And that was on Friday. Now, um, I just, just to remind us, I pulled out uh, the list of the stocks in the Dow Jones, uh, just to show you. It's easier to track it. It's only 30 stocks, right? You have NASDAQ, it's 100 stocks, and S&P 500 is 500. So here, take a look. The biggest loser in Dow was uh, Intel after the earnings, and uh, the details are not so great. Uh, the stock was uh, closed down 26%. At some point, it was down 28% during the session. Amazon down uh, almost 9%. American Express, 65 Goldman, all the banking sector. We're going to take a look at the, at the banking stocks when we get to the charts. But as you could see across the board, Goldman, uh, JP Morgan, all the stocks are down. And uh, on the on the upside, actually, you have United Health uh, was up almost three percent, McDonald almost three percent, Procter Gamble two sixty five, Johnson Johnson, Coca Cola, Merck, and others. So you see a huge drop in some stocks, and you see the others uh, showed some positive move on Friday on the sell off market, which is important to take into consideration. Also out of uh, all the stocks that reported this week, I think Apple was the only one uh, didn't sell off. But again, now that it's public that uh, Warren Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway, they sold 50% of their holdings, we might see reaction in the Apple stock in the upcoming week. Okay, so uh, we'll move to the uh, charts now. And we'll start with indices. And let's start with China and Japan, actually. Uh, China uh, tried to move higher, as we as we said last week, we did break uh, through the support, came back to retest it, and then moved lower. Uh, we have some data from China. Let's see how this week will play out. Japan index, the Nikkei, it just fell through the floor. And a lot of it, of course, first of all, the global sell-off in the U.S. market, of course, 
uh, affected everything. And secondly, the Japanese yen has been uh, super, super strong since uh, since the decision to raise the rates, something that we've been discussing for months now. Take a look at this move. You've taken the weekly chart, actually monthly. Only the past month, uh, we're talking about uh, most of it happened in July. And then we continue now. So from the peak that we had at almost 162, the high was 161.94. And we are at 146.50 closing on Friday. Okay, so that's Yen. Going back to uh, Nikkei, Nikkei sold uh, due to the higher Yen, and that's number one, the reason probably. So uh, to US indices, as we said, they sold across the board. We have Dow Jones. Uh, breaking through 50-day moving average is still the strongest out of three. Uh, the weakest, as we said, is NASDAQ. It's been uh, selling uh, really, really hard, especially the past two days of the week, Thursday and Friday. Uh, S&Ps as well, Thursday and Friday. S&Ps are holding around 100-day moving average, and NASDAQ actually almost hit the 200 moving average here. So again, like, like we said, uh, after such a huge sell-off, uh, it's very important to see what's next. Is this the triggers? Is the beginning of a panicky sell-off or crash, as some people like to call it? Or is this an opportunity for the traders to come in and start buying? I guess we'll find out. There's a lot of fear of recession, especially after this NFP data. We had uh, less jobs added. And we had uh, a big jump uh, in unemployment to 4.3%. Now, going to Europe, Germany uh, fell through the floor as well. When I say floor, it's just breaking the support. We broke below 18,000, closing at 17,813, between 100 and 200 moving average. France as well broke that uh, support that we held from the initial move uh, down on the elections and political crisis there. Uh, UK is the only one holding, as you could see, uh, after breaking below that 81.80, we moved higher. And now it looks like we are holding this and we're holding also this 100 day moving average. The Russell 2000, the small caps, also fell down heavily on Thursday and Friday, and we are around 50-day moving average here on Russell. So again, uh, we have more earnings coming. Uh, we have about 80 out of uh, S&P 500 stocks reporting. So it's gonna be interesting week. We have some data and definitely we wanna see over the weekend how the public and the investors and the traders and and uh, analysts and everybody else digest this Friday sell-off and we'll see how the week starts after this uh, significant sell-off in the market. Uh, we'll move now to individual stocks. Uh, let's take a quick look what's happening. Uh, we'll start with the, stock, with the stock that kind of was leading the market higher. And if you remember, I mentioned, I don't remember it was last week or the week before, I mentioned to you as I witnessed a lot of things in the market, including the 2000 dot com sell off and 2008. And uh, I mentioned that uh, the AI era also uh, could be uh, overbought or overexcited, and we might see some correction. Take a look at NVIDIA. Uh, after breaking uh, this support around 117, 118, we went lower. Uh, this was on the 30th of July. We, we were as low as 102.41. And Friday, we almost hit 100. We were as low as 101.30 here on uh, NVIDIA. So let's see if we are holding this psychological level of 100, uh, see if that holds. Now, uh, 
we had uh, a lot of stocks selling that includes Tesla. Tesla is, uh, let me switch to MT4 now. I have my levels there. Here comes Tesla. We've been selling here as well. And as you know, Tesla has been uh, having this 200 level of, as a strong psychological level of first it was resistance, then it was support. So we closed at 207, which is very close to, to that 200 mark. Uh, most of the stocks uh, sold, as we said, and let's take a look at the, at, uh, the banking sector. They really sold, and I was looking uh, looking up uh, what's happening there. It looks like uh, a lot of money went into the bonds issued by the banks. So huge sell-off after we've been holding up on banks. Take a look. This is Wells Fargo. Uh, this definitely looks like a panicky sell-off. Take a look. This is Thursday with a huge gap on Friday, hitting right to 200 moving average here. Goldman Sachs, the same thing. We came to uh, the previous level of resistance, which could be support now. Uh, JP Morgan, right on 100 moving average. Also, it looks like a panicky sell-off. Morgan Stanley, the same thing. Bank of America, huge sell-off that started actually before, if you remember here. Uh, we mentioned that uh, Warren Buffett's been selling uh, Bank of America stock and has been slowly moving and then it uh, really got intense in the last three days of the week. Citigroup, huge, huge gap with the sell-off and hitting right where the support was back in June 14, 58.62, closing a few cents below. So definitely we'll be watching the banks, see if uh, if this sell-off will uh, will trigger some buying, or it might continue lower from here. Now, Apple stock, as we said, was uh, the only one of uh, reported stocks that uh, kind of uh, remained strong. And as we said, that uh, the the Warren Buffett or the Berkshire, they announced that they sold 50% uh, of their holdings. So as of now, after the sell of their holding, about 2.6% of Apple stock. And I'm quoting here that the stake is worth about 88 billion based on Friday closing price of 219.86. So uh, that's Apple. Now, of course, we had a few others selling, as we said, Intel, a uh, huge sell-off here, and uh, at some point the stock was down more than 28%. Uh, the low here was 2040, and it closed a dollar higher than that. Another one is continue selling and close right at $10, just forward. It's very important that $10 is a strong psychological level also when stocks move below 10. Uh, they might uh, be considered uh, not attractive or maybe even a uh, candidate for delisting. So definitely we'll be watching Ford. Uh, it lost uh, a lot of its value in the past, uh, the past two weeks, I think, as you could see here. So uh, we had uh, Amazon went down, actually, let me just see. Okay, take a look. With the earnings report, there's a huge sell-off. We had Boeing on the earnings, continue selling. Uh, so as you could see, a lot of sell-offs, a lot of panic in stocks. So uh, banks, as we said, we'll be watching the banks as the whole group sold. And uh, just to give you an idea, JP Morgan down 4.8%, Citigroup down 7%, Wells Fargo down 6.6%, Morgan Stanley down 5.8%, Bank of America down 4.8%. So, uh, and here also I'm going to quote from one of the articles. It says, investors' money was flowing into bonds issued by JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America during Friday's stock market swoon 
on fresh worries on recession. Interesting, right? Uh, so that's that's as far as uh, as far as the stocks uh, we have. As I said, we have 80 stocks uh, reporting this upcoming week. Out of uh, plus, out of uh, S and P 500. So uh, one of them is actually uh, Uber. I want to bring it up. We didn't speak about Uber for a while, and we totally neglected it. Let's take a quick look where it is. Here we go. Uh, take a look. Uber has been strong, if you remember that. Uh, it was kind of a holding, and then we start selling it. We didn't speak about it for a while. Then we back and we went back around to between 70, 75, and from then, starting the mid July, we've been selling. And uh, the stock reached on Friday with this gap sell off, we reached the level of January the 5th or January in general, when the, the beginning of this move up started. So this is very crucial. And we're having earnings. Um, Uber is reporting on Tuesday. We'll be watching that definitely. Okay, let's move to commodities and let's start with gold. Gold actually played as a nice safe haven from the beginning of this uh, market sell-off uh, and we did great until we didn't, right? So this is on Friday. We we reached the high of 2477. And then the next uh, two hours was sold, especially the sell-off started at 2 p.m. GMT. And we came straight to that support that we had on the first. So. Uh, we are kind of holding this level for now. Uh, the level of 2430. You could see here in the hourly chart, we hit straight to that level. And then uh, we had the spike below. The buyers came in and took it up again. So this 2430, this was the low of Thursday, I believe. Here we go. The low of Thursday was 24.30. So for now, it holds as uh, support. As you could see, it was a huge range in gold up and then down and we closed somewhere in, in, in the middle. So definitely we'll be watching gold. Silver, as we said before, silver is, doesn't act as strong as gold. And a lot of it to do with China is being used as silver is being used and uh, producing uh chips and other technology and demand it looks like demand for physical silver is cooling down uh, then brings us to copper as we said copper is, has been reacting to the weakness in chinese market it's been selling and uh, we are uh, sitting at these current levels uh, waiting for what's next would we'll below all the three moving averages here uh, oil and natural gas. As you could see, oil had a huge sell-off on Friday as well, both Thursday and Friday. And uh, some people thought this Wednesday brought it up. They thought that maybe escalation in the Middle East would cause some worries about supply. But uh, those worries just disappeared on Thursday and Friday. So we sold on oil. And by the way, when we get to Canadian dollar, uh, I'll, I'll mention it again. Uh, Canadian dollar has been super weak, and I think partially the reason is the um, the oil price is going lower. So that's on oil again. If oil continues lower, we have uh, our support here from which we made a higher high. That was uh, 72.46. That level we reached on July 4th. We we were at 72.95 low on Friday before bouncing a little bit to the upside. Uh, cocoa and sugar, as we speak about it almost every week, cocoa sold on Thursday and was kind of flat on, on Friday. But as you could see here, after the sell-off, we're really struggling to move higher. Instead, we're making uh, a lower highs or keep on making lower highs, which, uh, doesn't look that uh, attractive, right? So uh, if we continue low, we might come back to this uh, seven around 7,000 level that we tried 
on many occasions starting from May. And we sustained that support and maybe we'll try again. Uh, we'll be watching that. Uh, sugar, sugar uh, is back uh, or almost back to that uh, level from which we tried to bounce many times. First time we'll, we hit this level of 1795, that was back in mid-May. And then we try to hang out around here and then we moved making a higher high or breaking the previous strong resistance. And then after that, we've been sliding lower. We had to jump to around 19 and back to 18. So let's see what happens this time. That sugar. Now let's take a look at grains. We mentioned um, soybeans, wheat, and copper as they were selling off. Here we go. This is wheat. Uh, after a huge sell-off that started at uh, the end of May, we had few attempts to break. Uh, we moved lower, making a lower low, and then we moved lower again, making a lower low again. And then the last three sessions, we've been trying to bounce. Let's see uh, if we manage uh, to bounce from here. So that's uh, on wheat, corn, doesn't look uh, as, as uh, promising here. We did break through this support around three, 389, 390. And uh, so then we reversed here um, on the 1st of August. And then the 2nd of Friday, we made the move to the upside. So if uh, corn decides to move higher. Again, when you take grain, sometimes they make uh, crazy moves, uh, totally disregarding the levels, of course. But if we do choose to move higher, we'll first see uh, this level here, 389 and a half, and try to break through that level and maybe start establishing some support. And uh, soybeans, similar idea here. We are holding this level of initial sell-off that started the week. And that's around 1,007. Let's see if, if some buyers come and save the day for soybeans. You take uh, the higher time frame, the monthly chart, uh, I don't see anything strong or significant there. So. Again, uh, soybeans, corn, and wheat. Uh, after uh, a huge sell-off, pretty much gradual, sometimes, sometimes uh, panicky. We are establishing some kind of support, and let's see if that support uh, will lead to some uh, upside move. Okay, well, let's move to forex. We'll start with dollar index. Uh, dollar index uh, has been selling. Again, I forgot to mention the 10-year yields just fell through the floor as well as the bonds start attracting uh, buyers and the yields went below four. And uh, that what pushed the gold initially higher and that would push dollar lower. If you remember, we, we mentioned here the dollar has been sitting around 104 waiting for that uh FOMC and the NFPs and uh with the NFPs the moment the data came in right here we we did sell off on the dollar so if you take uh relative strength and I went through the currencies uh the weakest one uh it looks uh, that Canadian dollar is the weakest, even weaker than the dollar. How do we know? It brings us to USD CAD, as you could see here. Even as the US dollar got weak, it actually got stronger against the Canadian dollar at the end of the week, Thursday and Friday. And the strongest one, actually uh, two uh, of the currencies, which is Swiss franc and Japanese yen, which brings us to the classic scenario of the safe haven. As we mentioned a few times, 
during the months and years that we're here uh, on this webinar. Um, there's a classic scenario for safe haven, and usually the three instruments are responsible for that, and that's gold, uh, Swiss franc, and Japanese yen. Now, for a while, Japanese yen was out of the game because uh, they didn't change. They were in negative territory as far as the interest rate. Then uh, it was brought to zero, and then last week it was brought to positive uh, zone. So those two uh, gain some strength, especially with the market sell-off, just to show you. Uh, first, I'll show you Swiss franc against Japanese yen. As you could see, it, the last two days, they're flat. So that means they're pretty much equal value. And interestingly enough, we've, we've been talking about this, right? About this pair for a long time. And we came right back to here around 170.77, the level that we had support. Sorry, yeah, a lot of actions happened that we had the resistance here that we broke through, uh, down again, up again, and then after establishing again this support in mid May, we had a huge move to the upside as the yen weakened, right? And we came right back, but you could see the last two days we had uh, pretty much flat on this pair. But if you take uh, dollar yen, take a look, by the way, we also came to a serious level from which we started the move uh, back in March. Also worth watching here on dollar yen, right? We stopped right there, this sell off again from 160.170 to 146.50. That's uh, about. 1500 pips, that's a huge move. Now, uh, and uh, Swiss, dollar Swiss, uh, uh, sorry, not the one. And take a look here, similar situation, right? Just the, not the March, but February. We, we're moving toward that number here. And funny enough, Swiss uh, National Bank, they the only bank that already cut twice, I believe, out of central banks and is still, didn't uh, make the Swiss franc weak. As you could see, dollar's been selling against the Swiss franc, just to show you that it looks like both Swiss franc and Japanese yen are attracting money as being a safe haven in uncertain times of risk of when the market is selling. Definitely worth uh, noticing that. Now, uh, Euro has been strong uh, against dollar and the pound, but weak against Swiss franc and Japanese yen, as we said. So here's a euro dollar, huge move to the upside, pretty much a mirror image of dollar index. And if you take, if you take a pound, it didn't act as strong against the dollar here. So definitely worth watching. Now, Australia and New Zealand dollar, uh, also super, super weak, as you could see, they had a little bit green uh, on Friday against the US dollar. New Zealand dollar actually a little bit more. And we spoke about this level 0.5870, uh, that we might actually see some bounce here on New Zealand dollar. Now, uh, let's just again, take a look at the yen against all the currencies. So Swiss franc, it looks like it's holding here. Australian dollar, huge sell-off against the yen. We came back to the level of January of this year. Actually broke that level. The low here in February, what was that? That's sorry, that was February. The low was 95.49. We are a few pips below and definitely New Zealand uh, JPY, a huge, huge sell-off here. Take a look. So across the board, the Japanese yen is super, super strong. And as I mentioned, sometimes it looks like it's a big move, right? But let's say if you take, let's take dollar yen, just for instance, if you go to a monthly chart, it doesn't look that huge, right? It looks there's a way to go. All this move actually uh, to, this second kind of, uh, the first first one uh, started in uh, 2021 in January. So we had, then we had after correction, we moved 
I've retested the same high of October 2022, then uh, a higher low followed by a new high, and then we hit that. By the way, it looks like uh, we did break uh, this past week the trend line that we're driven here, right? You can connect it the lows here, we just broke below it, so it could be that we might uh, continue lower here, but as I said, we are reaching important levels, so we might see some bounces to the upside, or we might not, but the levels are there and they will attract some traders. So that's as far as uh, Forex, as we said, uh, Canadian dollar is the weakest and uh, Japanese yen uh, together with Swiss franc, it looks like the strongest. And let's see what happens as we reached uh, certain important levels, we might see some corrections in Japanese yen in the upcoming week. And as I promised uh, for dessert, uh, some crypto, we are selling uh, this past week. Uh, and it, it's true, it looks like the money goes somewhere. It goes to save heaven, Swiss franc and Japanese yen. And as we mentioned, uh, the analyst said that a lot of money went into the bonds issued by some major banks. So as of now, we're just uh, trading around 60 and a half thousand in the Bitcoin. We are below the 200 moving average here. We did break below the trend line here. And Ethereum, we spoke about Ethereum with the ETFs coming out. Uh, there was a nice move, that correction. There was a hope here that we're moving higher. And in the past uh, week, uh, we went down pretty much every day. And here we're also reaching a serious level of support, which is hit uh, that support uh, on Saturday, the low of 28.56. We're trading around 2,900 as of now. So uh, let's see uh, what's waiting for us in the upcoming week in uh, cryptocurrencies. Okay. so. Uh, Let's just uh, summarize. Uh, and before that, uh, just to remind you, if you are watching it on YouTube, please uh, subscribe, click on the bell, uh, write your comments and questions and share with people that you think might benefit. Now, uh, to summarize, uh, we had uh, the end of the week uh, was super volatile. The VIX almost hit 30. Uh, we had a huge sell-off in major stocks. NVIDIA uh, went to uh, 101. Uh, most of the major stocks and uh, Magnificent 7 are selling. Uh, we had some earnings. Intel was down, closing down around 26 cent. The NASDAQ has been selling uh, heavily, uh, reaching a 10% uh, a correction from the highs. So it looks like uh, there's a sell-off, there's some panic injected by the analysts. They're comparing it uh, with uh, recessions for the previous years. they followed by the peak in interest rate. Uh, some analysts also, I forgot to mention, they predicted the September uh, 18 uh, interest rate decision could be uh, 50 basis points, not 25. They're expecting the Feds maybe to act uh, more aggressively uh, to kind of uh, prevent the hard lending or recession. So uh, we have about 80 stocks out of uh, S&P 500 reporting. It's going to be an interesting week. We are in August. Uh, normally, August is a quiet month, but as you could see, we started it in a really high volatility. So uh, for some, it's bad. For traders, especially retail traders, day traders, volatility is good. In any event, uh, you have to measure your risk. You have to manage your funds, uh, get some rest, prepare yourself for the upcoming week. I want to wish everyone a successful week. And God willing, we'll see each other again uh, the upcoming Sunday. Take care. All the best.